Hi guys again, hope you're doing great. Today I'm going to run you through a tutorial on creating Google Docs tables completely. I haven't been able to find a complete tutorial when I needed to, so I had to look over several different resources in order to create the tables that I needed. And the thing is that Google Docs has some limitations, so I'm going to show you some workaround to fix those problems as well. Now to get started, you're just going to insert your first table. Don't worry too much about the number of columns and rows that you're going to have for your table because you can add these after you've created it. So I'm just going to go with two rows and two columns for now. Now obviously to change the size of your columns and rows, you're just going to drag the lines according to your needs. Then if you want to add some more rows, you're just going to click on the row below or above which you want to add a new row. Then click right, insert row above if you want the row to be added on top of the row you've clicked. Or insert row below if you want it to appear below. I'm just going to add some more for now. And the similar is valid for your columns. So you're going to click on the column next to which you want to add your new column. Click right, insert column to the left, or insert column to the right. Now I don't need these right now, so I'm just going to remove some by clicking on the one which I want to remove, then click right, delete column, and I'm going to delete another one. And now I'm just going to change my size again so that it looks okay. And then again, the similar is valid for deleting rows as well. Now, if you look at this table, you'll notice that the first row is much smaller in height than the others. To fix this, you're just going to click right anywhere on the table and click on distribute rows. And the similar is valid for columns as well. So if you want your size to be equal, click right, distribute columns, and everything will be equalized. Now to merge cells, you're just going to select the cells you want to merge, click right and simply click on merge cells and they will be merged. I'm also going to merge this one, add some more rows, but I want these to have two distinct columns, so I'm going to select it and click on unmerge cells. Now the issue I've had with Google Docs is that I cannot move the columns from one area without the line from the columns from the other area to move as well. So I can't move these two, for example, without the ones above moving as well. Now one solution for this would be to create the table first in another editor. Now if you know any other way of fixing this, please let me know because I couldn't find any resource for this. Now a way of creating this correctly is to go to another text editor and create your table there. However, just go with one column. Add the number of rows that you need. And for your columns, you're going to draw them. So you're going to select the draw table option and then just draw your lines wherever you need them to be. And I've created this just to show you how it actually works. You're going to select your table, copy it, and then go to Google Docs and now you are going to be able to move everything the way you want it to be. So I do recommend that you first build your base in another editor if you want more detailed tables. Now another issue I've had but it's kind of inevitable is that if I now want to add another column it will be added to the entire table. So you need to go and merge everything again. Now for the editing part, I'm just going to add some data to the table. Insert some more rows, edit the sizing so that it's varied. And then you're just going to continue editing your table the way in which you would with normal text. And then maybe add some more rows. Notice here that the row I'm adding is the same size as the one I've clicked on when I wanted to add the new row. And just to see how this works for columns as well, I'm going to make this column smaller and add a new column. And you'll see that it's the exact size. Now to add some color to your table, you're going to click on the box that you want to edit. Click right, 
table properties and from here you can choose all of the details that you want to use for your tables design for now i'm just going to change the cell's background color to this light blue and i'm going to click on ok and you'll notice how only this cell has changed its color. Then if you want to change the color of more than just one cell, you select the exact cells that you need to change. Again, click on Table Properties, Cell Background Color, pick a different color, and click on OK. Even if you click on a specific cell and then click on Table Properties, you can only change the border of the entire table. For example, let me just highlight this with red and with some more thickness, and the whole table is changed in terms of border. So I'm just going to undo this. Now another thing which I couldn't figure out how you can do in Google Docs is to separate the table from one into two different tables. For example, I might want to have a break between the final cost cell and these other cells. So what you can do is that you can go and create a separate table below your first one. Click below your table insert another table that would match the first ones and edit it so that it's similar to the other ones. Now you can just move this table on the other page by clicking on enter and you've got yourself two similar tables between which you can add some text. And I'm also going to use this second table to show you some of the other ways in which you can format the text that you have in a single cell. So let's say this is your text. You're going to select the cell, click right, click on table properties, and then opt for where your writing needs to be in that specific cell. For example, if you want it at the bottom, you're going to select this and your text will be automatically moved there. And the same goes for the entire table as you can align it according to your exact needs. For example, you can center the table so that it's exactly on the center of your page. And then you can also work with the table's dimensions by inserting the exact centimeters that you need for your columns width and the minimum row height and also the cell padding. For example, if you want to select these, click on right. Table Properties, select a larger cell padding, click on OK, and all of the cells you've selected will automatically be changed to that padding. Now the last thing that I want to show you is the fact that you might see this little arrow in the corner of each cell and this is basically used if you want to select a specific side of that table, for example the one on top. And once you've selected it either through this option or just by simply clicking on it, you have some other ways of editing your border. And if you remember, I've shown you how you can edit the border of the entire table, but by simply selecting the side which you want to edit and then working with maybe the width and the exact format of that side you can change it a bit and another way of doing this but not as specific is by selecting your columns and going in this right corner and again selecting your exact needs but if you'll take a look now this edits your entire cell so you have exactly three options of editing your borders you can either click right on table properties and add a border for your entire table you can also click on a specific side and edit it individually and also if you click on the zero points you will be able to remove it entirely or you can select all of your cells that you want to edit and work with that. So now if you want to delete this mess in terms of border, you can just go to table properties, click on zero points, OK, and you've got a table with no borders. And then to get your border back, you're just going to go to table properties again, select maybe one point for your table's border, click on OK, and you'll get your border back. However, the sides that you have edited individually will remain the same as you can see from this dotted side. And what you can do is that you can just Select it to be like the other ones. Now this would be about all for today. If you know any way of editing your table's columns without the line moving in the entire table, just let me know. Now one solution would be to create two different tables like I did here. And if you'll take a look, moving one column from one table won't change the other columns from the other table. So let me know if you know any other fix for this. Have a nice day, stay tuned for more tutorials, don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.